What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Benchwire. Today we have our Week 17 NFL predictions. Uh, tonight's going to be pretty bad. Thursday night football. It's going to be a stinker, like you said. Uh, Cowboys, Titans. Cowboys will probably be without Tony Pollard, I believe. And then the Titans, they don't have Henry, and they're starting Joshua Dobbs at quarterback. Exactly. Um, so this is, yeah, this is not going to be a good game for – for people that had Tony Pollard on fantasy for this championship week, I'm sorry. <laughs> Derrick Henry, also sorry. You don't need him, don't uh, need him. but it still it sucks for for them. Um, Titans are probably going to lose, uh, which is my prediction. And well, it's not even a probably that they're, they're going to lose. Um, and that pretty much means that next week with the uh, with the Jags likely winning this week, I believe. Over yeah, over the Texans, it'll be uh, the battle for the uh, AFC South. Yes, very interesting. Um, Cowboys Titans tonight. Give me the Cowboys. The Titans. They're injury riddled, and it was just confirmed Ryan Tannehill is now out for the season, so their season's pretty much over. And Derrick Henry out of nowhere just came up on the injury report and is not playing for this game. Very disappointing. And yeah, pretty much the Titans season is going to be done if. They lose this game and lose next week, which is most likely going to happen. So give me the Cowboys. The Arizona Cardinals, they're going to head or, yeah, head into Atlanta to take on Death Ritter and the Falcons. Tyler Algier, he's been pretty good. Um, although I do think the Cardinals' run defense is going to be able to put a stop to him. So I guess it's going to be a matter of if Colt McCoy, who should play, uh, I believe will be back from his concussion protocol, uh, if he can play, the Cardinals will probably win this game. But if he doesn't, it'll be Trace McSorley. And although they played the Bucks pretty close on uh, on Christmas, I, I, I don't think they would. Uh, don't think that they would get the same luck against the Falcons. Yeah, I got the Falcons losing this game. So give me the Cardinals. I think Colt McCoy being in the lineup will help their offense out a lot. I don't think McSorley's that great. We saw it last week. He wasn't that great. He had, like, one good throw to Hollywood Hollywood Brown, I saw. Other than that, he just didn't look like an NFL quarterback, and we all knew that by now. Um, but I'm con- I'm excited to see Desmond Ritter. Um, he hasn't been, been, like, great and all, but I think he'll be decent this game against this Cardinals team that hasn't been great all year, so... So yeah, it could be an interesting game, but I have the Cardinals winning at the end of the day. Uh huh. Just to touch on Desmond Ritter real quick, he um he hasn't obviously looked particularly good, but he hasn't looked bad, which is something that's very uh surprising for a guy. Obviously, you know, getting a start late into the season when everybody else has played now for ten plus weeks, and then he's just kind of thrown into the fire. Uh. Credit to him. He he hasn't looked bad. So, who knows? Maybe next season, uh, he'll. Uh, sorry, I just saw a tweet. It looks like Haha Clinton Dix is signing with somebody for like a one day contract to retire. Probably the Packers. Yeah, you would think. Um, I mean, it has to be Packers. So, but yeah, Tasman Ritter I wanted to give him a little bit of credit. Uh, the Dolphins and the Patriots, they go at it as well. At one o'clock on Sunday, Patriots they have kind of fallen apart here late into the season. Um, it looked promising, but then these last two games uh, they kind of shot themselves in the foot with mistakes. Um, Jacoby Myers, obviously his uh, lateral or whatever into Chandler Jones's hands, and then you yeah, also had. Uh, Ramondre Stevenson fumbling at the end of the game while they were in the red zone, or at least really close to it. So, Patriots, they've fallen apart. And I know that, you know, in the past, they've kind of had their way with the Dolphins, or uh, not had their way with the Dolphins, but they've been able to kind of play them close, I guess. Um, I think the Dolphins are going to win this, even with Teddy Bridgewater. But, uh, again, I, I wouldn't be too surprised if it stays close. Yeah, I have the Dolphins winning this game as well. Um, yeah, the Patriots' offense has just been awful. They need to fire fire Matt Patricia and get someone in that organization that knows how to run an offense because Matt Patricia doesn't. Nathaniel Hackett. 
Nathaniel no. Hackett, eh, I don't I don't like that either. <laughs> that was um, a joke. Yeah, they got to find someone that is a good veteran offensive coordinator that knows how to call offensive plays, and I think can help out Mac Jones would be amazing for them. But I don't know what Bill Belichick's going to do. He's too stubborn to like hire a good offensive coordinator. Um, but I do have the Dolphins winning this game, even with Teddy Bridgewater in the lineup. I want to get your thoughts on uh, Mr. Tua Tonga Viola. What do you what do you think of his little situation and his third concussion? They're saying now. Um, I mean, first and foremost, uh, the NFL or during NFL games, they have sires or or I don't know what the the word is, but they have guys that are supposed to be looking for concussions and uh or yeah, sorry, they're called spotters. Um, I said sliders. <laughs> eh, same thing. Yeah, the spotters, they didn't catch it, so... Obviously. But... Yeah, I mean, Tua, he played the rest of that game with a concussion. I believe he threw three picks after getting the concussion. Um, Yeah. So, I, got I, it at the end I of the think first half. There, there is something to be said about Tua starting the season really well, looking really good, and then he's gone through all these concussions, and he hasn't really looked the same since. Mm-hmm. Um, I hate to obviously speculate with health situations because it's nothing to speculate about. There's a good chance Tua is at home doing fine right now, but there's also a good chance that, you know, three concussions in one season, uh, especially for a position as important as the quarterback, I mean, it, it wouldn't be out of the question that they sit him for the remainder of this regular season. I think you have to at this point. Um, now say they make the playoffs, you start them. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would say if he feels a hundred percent good to go, but right now I think a, the health of your franchise quarterback is more important than just this season. Uh, especially because if he gets one more concussion, it, I mean, again, I'm speaking out of my, you know, you know what, but I mean, the only thing is that, I mean, I feel like if you get that many concussions, it you could retire early because of that stuff. Oh yeah. Because that, I mean, Concussions are nothing to play with. Um, I had one, and it was nowhere near what an NFL player would go through. Because, of like, I mean, I just tripped. I, I straight up, I tripped. I fell. It felt like there was a knife going through my head. Like, it was that kind of pain. So I, I can only imagine getting hit as hard as these people do. And to have multiple, I mean, yep. it's sad. And then also, you never know about CTE either. He, he could start having some of those signs and... I don't know. It's such a weird situation. I'm personally on the boat of who needs to take his health uh, or put his health first right now. It, mm-hmm. If he feels that he he's um, or that, you know, if he feels like he won't be able to go on the rest of his life and live a normal life after football with what he's been going through, he should just retire now. And I think everyone would should support that. What I think he should do is just shut it down for the whole season. I don't think he should even play in the playoffs because I don't even think there'll be anything special in the playoffs as of right now. They have been not the same team in the second half of the year because they started finally playing good teams, and then they just haven't been the same. Um, Tua, though, yeah, he has to shut it down because he already has three concussions this season. You get another one, yeah, your career's up in the air and your health is up in the air, so – Fire the Dolphins, I just shut him down for the rest of the year. And, you know, going to offseason, monitoring his concussions and making sure that he's A-OK to start next year. And I don't even know if I want him to play in the preseason, maybe like one or two games, just not the whole time. Because I think he needs to, like, heal up and make sure he's doing everything right to be ready for next season. So I think he should mentally that. take a step away from football right now. Yeah. And really just – Think about his future because, you know, this many concussions sustained in the amount of time that, like, if you get a concussion, you know, once every season, uh, it's bad, but it's not as bad as, you know, three in one season. And they were all relatively close in time. Yeah. So I, I, mean, I feel like ever down. since his first concussion, he hasn't gone three weeks without getting another one. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And, and I think there also needs to be something said about, um, his quarterback staff or, or coach, I feel like, I don't know, some of these quarterback hits and all that, I know it's part of football, but, I mean, he gets way too deep into the pocket sometimes. 
Um, yep. To the point where, I mean, the defensive linemen or their offensive linemen have no chance to protect them. And so, boom, get past them, you get hit. So, yep. there's a lot of adjustments that the Dolphins need to make. But, yeah, we'll move on right now just because that was obviously a little bit of a long talk. Um, I needed to be the Eagles. Um, yeah, Saints-Eagles. That's an interesting game. So, before today, Hurts did not practice since his uh, shoulder sprain. Um, but today he did. He did practice. He was out there throwing. Uh, didn't do any contact drills. A lot of people are speculating if, well, because he didn't do contact drills, he's not going to be ready for the I, – I don't believe that. I think that they're just kind of going to see how it is going into the game. Yep. Um, I'd say right now it's probably a 50-50 chance. A lot of people are saying that he should rest. I don't believe that. I think that – like I've had a shoulder sprain. I, I'm sure most people have had a shoulder sprain at some point in their life. Um, now his obviously looked like it was a lot more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I don't, I don't know the word. <laughs> I don't know. What you're say, it, it's a higher level of pain, I guess. Um, pain tolerance. Some, I mean, he has a high pain tolerance, obviously, cause he played through the game with it, but, yeah. um, whatever it is. NFL players, they're hit harder. It hurts more, whatever. Um, I'm sure that I, I don't even know what I'm trying to do. I'm, you know what? I might have a concussion. You might have a concussion. I don't know. Concussion. Um, do you think he should play this game, though? I mean, again, it depends how he feels going into it. Obviously, uh, it's not Tua with the concussions, but they should obviously prioritize – Hurts his health going into the postseason. Yes, that's what I would do. Um, if I were the Eagles this game, I would start Gardner Minshew because it's the Saints, and I think with Gardner Minshew, you can beat the Saints. And I'm not worried about Jalen Hurts playing this game because I think Gardner Minshew can beat the Saints. So I would shut him down for the rest of the regular season, like maybe play some few snaps next week against the Giants, like the first drive, if you already clinched and won this game. That's yeah, no, do. if we win this game, I would definitely want – and it obviously Hurts doesn't play. Um, I would like to see Hurts at least for like two drives the next game against the Giants just so he can kind of get back into a rhythm. But I don't know. I mean, as an Eagles fan, it's rough. I I wish he would play this game and, and play the Giants game just to get back to where he was, taking a week off from your job and not really throwing the ball much because you have a sprain. Uh, I'm sure that that affects – the rhythm and that you know the accuracy and all of that kind of stuff you kind of have to find that arm slot again and so i think i don't know i also just want him to play because he's really good and i'm going against you in fantasy this week and i need him <laughs> you got jared goff legend <laughs> but uh, yeah I, I still think the eagles are going to win this game but yeah it's, rough one. it's gonna be i think it's gonna be close saints are right. really good as of lately I have the Eagles being a Saints, no matter who the starting quarterback is. I think the Eagles have the better roster, and they were really close with the Cowboys. If they didn't turn the ball over four times, they won that game. And I have the Eagles beating the Saints because I don't think they're that good. So give me the Eagles. All right. Indianapolis Colts, they head into MetLife to take on you guys, the Giants. Obviously, I think we all have the Giants winning this game, but – this is a major game. So unpredictable. I think this is a major game for the Giants. This winning in situation. If you win this game, you're in the playoffs. Um, I okay. feel like this could be a trap game for the Giants. Um, I know Wait, if, if, you guys, if you guys win this, are you in? We are in. Winning in. Okay. So, we got Nick Foles coming to town. He didn't look pretty last game. I think he threw three interceptions mm -hmm. and just wasn't great all day. Um, the Giants, they were really close with the Vikings, even though they lost that game to a 61 yard field goal. It was still a great game seeing Daniel Jones be very good at the end of the game and getting his team a chance to win that game was something very special to me watching that. Um, Saquon, he looked good from when he got the ball and I'm really liking Isaiah Hodgins. Isaiah Hodgins has stepped up big time for the Giants when they really need a receiver. He's been that guy. 
And hopefully, you know, the Giants can continue what they were doing last Sunday and put it all together and win this football game. I think this is a golden opportunity to win this game and get in the playoffs. And then you don't even have to play your starters next week against the Eagles, maybe like the first two drives, and then I would rest them as well, especially Saquon. That's a guy I want healthy for the playoffs. But I think this is a golden opportunity. you got to win this game, and I think they could do it against this Colts team. All right. The Carolina Panthers and Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they're going to go at it pretty much for the division. Um, well, actually, I, actually, because the Panthers, um, didn't they lose? Not, not this past week, but they lost to the Steelers two weeks ago. Yeah, they beat the Lions. Did that, do you know, does that throw anything off, or is it still up in the air? If the Bucks win this game, they won the division. That's all I know. Okay. So I do think that that Panthers game really ruined a lot <laughs> um, with the Steelers game. I think the the Bucks are going to win this. Um, I, I don't know. They're so unpredictable as well. I mean, there's a lot of teams in the NFL right now that are extremely unpredictable. Yes. Um, but you also have to take into account as, as unpredictable as the Bucks are, it is any given Sunday. And the Panthers could easily go in there and beat them. So... I think I'm going to go with the Bucks, but I, I wouldn't really be surprised if the Panthers win this game. Yeah, I, I'm 50-50 on this. I have the Bucks winning, though. I have the Bucks winning. I think the Bucks they're the better team. They have Tom Brady, and I can never go against Tom Brady. I think Tom Brady and the Bucks get the job done. They sneak their way into playoffs, barely, you know, being that division title contender. But I think the Panthers, they've had a good season after what it started out to be. Steve Wilkes, I think, to be their head coach next year. I think they should look at him and, you know, give him a chance in the interview process. But I do have the Bucks winning and beating the Panthers this Sunday for the division. All right. Broncos and Chiefs. Uh, Broncos are going to be their first game without Nathaniel Hackett after getting fired. Yep. And there I say we see results right away. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think the Broncos offense will look a little bit better. Um they'll have a new guy up there. I don't know his name. Um I believe he is their what what coordinator was he? Was he a coordinator? I'm gonna look it up while you Alright. I, I did read a little bit into it. Um I I mean <laughs> A it's gyro Ebro turned down. Oh, he turned down. Okay, hold on, hold on. <laughs> um, I think it's Jerry Rosberg. Jerry that's Rosberg. Right. I think that sounds right, yeah. Senior assistant is now that's the head coach. Yeah, so... Denver Broncos for the end of the season. Yeah. I mean, two games, but... <laughs> <laughs> and it's still the end of the year. Yeah, I think with interim coaches, uh, I feel like sometimes you see the results right away. Like, the team just has, like, a new spark. So I wouldn't be surprised if the Broncos actually will show a little bit of uh, competitiveness in this game. Yep. Uh, even though I still have the Chiefs winning. Oh, no yeah, doubt. I still have the Chiefs winning. Yeah. Uh, um, but I think it'll be more fun to watch, especially if you are uh, a Broncos fan. Because you guys, find, I mean, it's just going to be nice to see the team not led by Hackett right now. Yeah, had really all the major disappointment. Too. He's a major disappointment, and thank God he's gone. And I'm excited to see Russell Wilson with a good head coach, hopefully next season. Um, but I do have the Chiefs winning this game. The Chiefs already clinched the division. They clinched the playoff spot. They don't have much to play for, but to try and get the number one seed, I'm guessing, that's yeah. what they have to play for. But other than that, I think the Chiefs will win this game. Yeah, I mean, they want to get that one seed by so they can uh... – Get Mr. Kadarius Tony or Tony, Tony healthy. Yeah, that's well. He played the last two games. I'm pretty sure. Just hasn't been a factor. Yeah, it's because he's not healthy. Okay. <laughs> uh, next game is the Bears and the Lions. Um, obviously, I think a lot of us have the Lions winning this game, but the Bears have played the Eagles and the Bills back to back weeks pretty close until the end. Yeah. So you never know. You never know. I have the Lions winning this game um I know Justin Fields has had a great season but 
I don't think their team's good enough to beat the Lions right now. I know the Lions, they lost last week to the Panthers, but the Panthers are a better team than the Bears, in my opinion. And if the Bears lose out, I'm pretty sure they get the number one pick in the draft. So I think they would want to lose this game. So give me the Lions. All right. Uh, the Browns and the Commanders. This kind of has uh, playoff implications, obviously, for the Commanders. Um, they're starting Carson Wentz this week. They've yep. got back Carson Wentz. It's just a quarterback carousel. I, I don't I don't know what's going on over there. I feel like, as much as I've always defended Wentz, I, I feel like Heineke is the guy that got you in this situation to make the playoffs. So I don't know yeah, why, don't know you, why you switch from did. him. They played the Niners last week. Like I didn't think the Commanders are going to win that game, and – Heineke didn't look great because the Niners have one of the best defenses in the NFL, and they just benched them for once. I, I don't see it. I don't I know think, why they did that. I think that. what they're doing is they're really hoping that – they're just – I don't know. They want the, the good Wentz to come back because they know if they get the good Wentz, they will make the playoffs. Um, That's a lot to ask for, though. Hasn't looked like a good Wentz all year. Coming off another injury with his hand. Um. I have the Browns winning this game. I think the Browns' defense will give the commanders fits all day, and Carson Wentz will turn the ball over a lot like he always does. So give me the Browns. I have the commanders winning. Uh, I have Wentz actually having a good game. Um, I, listen, I, I not I, – good Carson Wentz will never be back, unfortunately. I think it's a sad reality. But I still think Wentz is a capable quarterback. Um. They're not going to be able to block Miles Garrett, in my opinion. So, <laughs> good luck with that. Wentz has gotten sacked a lot by us in the week. Uh, what? What? Week one, right? No, uh, week, just two. week two. Yeah. So, he's been there. He knows what it's like. Um, and just realistically, Deshaun hasn't played that well since coming back, which is fair, right? But yeah. Um, yeah, I think the Commanders are just as a team, they are more ready for this game than the Browns are. Jack, the Texans. I have the Jags winning. Uh, not much needs to be said. The Jags have been on fire. Trevor Lawrence has finally kind of showed up. Uh, I used to be like, you know what? I'll take Justin Fields over Lawrence. Well, not anymore. Um, finally come to your senses. It's not coming to my senses. It was at the time I would take Fields over Lawrence. but Nope. Never would. Never will. Um, Lawrence I have the, he has finally showed up. I have the Jaguars over the Texans. I think the Jaguars win this game. They win next week. They're going to win a division. They're going to have a playoff spot. So that's going to be very fun to watch. Mr. Doug Peterson, congrats on a good first season with the Jags. And I think they win this game. All right, Florida Niners Raiders. The Raiders are benching Derek Carr, and there's a chance that they might cut him in the off that I just read. So Stupid. Yeah, um, I, I don't really know what's going on over there. Um, Devontae Adams might not even be a Raider anymore. We don't know. Yeah, with all that money, he has no choice. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. He's They're starting play. Jared Stidham. And I can only imagine – I mean, I, I don't know what draft spot they sit at right now. I mean, they might have a chance to get in a quarterback. I don't know who it's going to be. Like, Will Levis maybe? I have no clue. Didn't but, they trade their first-rounder for Devontae, though? No, they still have their first-rounder. Will they give up for Devontae? That's what I want to know because how they – I said that the Packers don't have two firsts this year. Hmm. I don't know. They had two firsts in the last draft. Interesting. <laughs> um, I still have the Niners winning this game. But Jared <laughs> Stidham starting. The Raiders are a joke at this point. Josh McDaniels, like, I guess he's earned his right for another season as the head coach, but I don't think he's it for Las Vegas. I just think they need to find another head coach that can actually coach a football team. Because Josh McDaniels just isn't it to me. Um, but the Niners, Brock Purdy has been looking good. Won his first three starts, and I think he continues that trend this Sunday. And they're looking pretty good. I think they're one of the best teams in the NFC, and I think they'll show it against the Raiders this Sunday. Yeah, um, I think the 49ers are going to win the game as well. Brock Purdy, I'm not sold on him. I think he is a product of the Shanahan system that tends to work um, with any quarterback. And I think when the 49ers truly face a top team, we will start to see Brock Purdy beat Brock Purdy, who is a rookie quarterback. (laughs) 
he's in a system that's built for him. But I mean, I don't know. I feel like just the way that Niners are built, I feel like I, I don't know if I like. I guess this is a hot take. I don't think that they're built for adversity. I'll like see. I think when they when their quarterback faces pressure and, and things just kind of you know go the other team's way. Ironic. I mean, not ironic, but like you know, if something goes another team's way, of course they're gonna they're gonna win. But you know what I mean. Um, I feel like the Four Niners are a team that, with that system, they're capable of crumbling and not. I mean, they're obviously, like I said, they're going to win this game. But uh, when you brought up, you know, that you like them as one of the top teams, I just had to mention that. I think it's very possible that they go deep into the playoffs, but I, I don't know. I still, I can't, I can't buy them right now. Their defense is obviously the best in the league, no doubt. Where do you rank them in the NFC right now? I think they're better than Vikings. I think they're better than Cowboys, and I think they're. Second behind the Eagles. I would put them third. I think the Eagles and Cowboys are in front of them. I think they're a better team than Cowboys. I think the Cowboys have more to offer offensively. And they have a top defense as well. I think the Niners defense better than Cowboys defense in my opinion. It is. But I'm saying that when you have a defense that's you know, up there with the 49ers defense, and then you have an offense that is better than the 49ers offense, I think that that gives you the edge over them. I don't know. Once Debo comes back, Kittle, and then CMC, that's a hard offense to stop, in my opinion. It is a hard offense, but I, I again, I think once, you know, they have Trey Lance next year, who I still think could be a franchise quarterback, if they can get him going, then they're going to be, like, Extremely scary, but right now I'm I'm just not scared of Brock Purdy. I'm really not. He's made mistakes in games and it hasn't costed them because their defense has been good enough. But I don't know how. I I don't think that their offense has been challenged really yet by a top offense. You know, this late into the season when everything is rolling. You know what I mean? Okay. Um. Well, yeah, they're playing the Raiders this week, so we won't really see anything, but. I still think they're the second best team in NFC. And that's fair. All right. Let's move on. Jets, Seahawks. Who you got? Mike White is back. That yes, obviously. Sir. Huh? Yes, sir. Yeah, Mike White is back. He's likely going to be the Jets quarterback uh, <laughs> going into next season, I would assume, as well. I think that they've given up on Zach Wilson. Um, and I don't think that there's any veterans in the offseason that they're going to be trying to pick up unless Derek Carr becomes a possibility, but um, I don't know. you never know. I think uh, there's a few different options the Jets could go, but I feel like one that you know is guaranteed right now is that Mike White could be the guy next year. And so I think that they're going to give him an opportunity for the rest of the season, being these next two games, to really go out there and they're not going to protect him, right? They're going to let him sling it. And they showed that with that Vikings game when they made him throw 50 passes. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, I think the Jets are going to win this game. They have the defense. Um, and then they obviously have a quarterback that, no offense to Zach Wilson, I still think he could be good at somewhere, just not with the Jets. Um, I think Mike White, he's able to read defenses better and anticipate passes a lot better as well. Yep. I have the Jets winning this game as well. I think Zach Wilson is a bust. I've ever, I've said it since the start. Um Seahawks, I think they're a good team, but I don't think they're good enough to compete with the Jets right now, especially with Mike White starting. I think that's going to give them some problems on the defensive side of the ball. Um, but, yeah, I'm liking the Jets. I don't know. I don't think – I think they're out of the playoff picture right now. Um, but yeah, it's been a good team for the themselves. Jets. Um, Robert Sala has shown that he could be a good coach for them for hopefully years to come. And – it's been a good season for the Seahawks as well. I don't think they make the playoffs either. Um, but I just had the Jets beating the Seahawks. All right, Vikings, Packers. Packers are still in it. Yes, they are. Now, they need a lot to go well. I mean, they need you guys to lose. <laughs> well, they need us to lose out. 
Um, and I, I don't see that happening. So I think the Packers are technically eliminated, but um, the Vikings, they've played good this year. Um, although I do also kind of think that they are not as good as they their record shows. I think they're more of like a they're more of like a nine win team or a ten win team. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I, they're not really a twelve win team to me. They've um, had a nice little schedule for them this year. <laughs> yeah. Or I mean, I don't know. I don't look at the schedule like that. But they they've played down to their competition, I guess. Um, yes. So I do. I do think the Vikings are going to win this game, but I think it's going to be close. It's probably going to be one of the better games this Sunday as well. Um, Packers defense, they have been the talk of the season pretty much as the biggest letdown. Um, I feel like every position they had a good player this year, <laughs> but it just hasn't clicked. And I'm sure that their defensive coordinator will be gone. And, yeah, they're going to need a hard reset next season with this uh, – I would say honestly, both offensive and defensive coordinator. Yeah, they just need to reevaluate everything and maybe get Devontae Adams back if he's available. <laughs> um, that would be that would be crazy. That would be yeah, insane. Just one one season had to get away from the Packers, and then he's back. That would be crazy. Um, but for this game, I have the Vikings winning. And can we talk about Mr. Justin Jefferson? This man is like on pace to break Calvin Johnson's record. I think he should be up there in the MVP voting. He's been – He's getting – first and foremost, he's getting an extra game. Yeah. So, that always is. remember that. It's not going to – all these records going forward are going to have asterisks on them. I'm just saying he's been insane. Well, pretend yeah. like he, that Eagles game was a bye week for him, and then he just went off. No, no, no. He got <laughs> put in Alcatraz. <laughs> it was a bye week. He, he just was resting that game. Um, but, yeah, he's been insane this season. Um yeah, I mean he's working his way up. <laughs> I up, think he up, should up the be ladder. MVP talks. He should at least have like one or two MVP votes. I don't think he'll win it because it's a quarterback award. But I, I don't even think he deserves a vote. I think he deserves one vote. That man has pretty much carried that Vikings team. You yeah, know but, and there, I know. There's, there is a reason that quarterbacks get it. They run the whole entire team. <laughs> well, he runs the whole entire Vikings team right now. Um, hey, give credit to KJ Osborne and, and Adam Thielen and Dalvin Cook. Adam Thielen's been trash this year. He still um, had his moments. KJ Osborne has been better than him this year. Well, and yeah. Dalvin Cook's been decent. He has a thousand mm-hmm. yards, but not like a top five running back in the league right now. It's probably because of Mr. Justin Jefferson, but I think Justin Jefferson is probably the best receiver in football right now. I, yeah. I would say that right now. Easily. Uh, but yeah, I think the Vikings win this game and the Packers will officially be eliminated. Yep. So that leads us to the Rams and the Chargers, the Battle of L.A. Yes. Chargers will get home field, even though Rams will probably feel like it's home field still. <laughs> yep. Uh, they got more fans. Yeah. So I, I think I think the Chargers are going to win the game. I think they're just the better team. Unfortunately for the Chargers, they just keep on winning, and uh, Staley will be there next year. <sighs> Staley will be there next year. They're, they're, he's just holding them back. Yeah. I feel like he has gotten better. It hasn't helped them either. Not having Keenan Allen and Mike Williams for most of the season, that didn't help them. Um, the offensive line, Rashawn Slater's out for the year. They just haven't been fully healthy. I think that's a factor. Yeah. Um, but the Rams, they've been looking good the past two weeks. Um, Baker put, Mayfield put has 50 on Christmas. Yep, well, it was against the Nathaniel Hackett Broncos, so. They still put up 50. Nothing I, I remember I was, I was at the dinner table, and I, I just looked at my phone, and I went to go check on the score. I see 50. I'm like, huh? Yeah, it, it was it was something uh, special, that game for the Rams. But I do have the Chargers winning this game. Um, Justin Herbert, he didn't look great last week, but I think he uh, has a better game this time around. Aaron Donald's out for the year. Jalen Ramsey hasn't been that great. This Rams defense just hasn't been that great. Um, but I think the Chargers are the better team. They're in the playoffs for a reason, so give me the Chargers. All right, the Steelers. Steelers and the Ravens. It got flexed to Sunday night football. Um, I think Tyler Huntley's still playing for them at the moment. Uh-huh. Um, but the Steelers, they had a nice comeback victory against the crappy Raiders. Um I don't know who I'm going to pick for this game. I, I picked the Ravens. I think the Ravens are the better team. 
even out of Steelers, you know, they've won the last two games. I think they lose this time around because the Ravens are the better team this year, and they'll prove it this Sunday night. All right. And then last but not least, Bills. Who did you pick? Who did you even pick? What? Steelers Ravens. You didn't pick him. That's a trash game. You got to pick. <laughs> <sighs> no, I'm not picking. <laughs> you have to pick. <laughs> All right. Uh, Steelers. Really? I need to know why now. I need a reason. I just don't like Tyler Huntley at quarterback for the Ravens. I thought you said he was good. He can be. <laughs> not right now. Well, I think he's playing hurt right now with the shoulder. So, like, that could be a factor why. Um, I still think the Ravens are the better team, but you got the Steelers. All right, cool. Um, Bills, Bengals. Yeah. Really good game. Monday night. I'm riding with Joe Burrow on the Bengals. I think they have enough to beat this Bills team. The Bills, I agree. The Bills, they've won a lot of games, and they lost some games that they should have won. I think the Bills are a good team, but they're not a great team. I think they'll be in the playoffs. They'll be contending for the Super Bowl, but I don't think they're a better team than the Bengals right now. So give me Joe Burrow and the Bengals. I agree. Give me Joe. Give Joe Shiesty. Joe Shiesty, Jamar Chase. They got that connection, and they're going to show it this Monday night. And it's going to be a good game. But, yeah, this was a longer predictions video. We were going more in-depth analysis on it. Yeah. And we're going to talk about Tua. We're going to talk about – Don't worry. Uh, I got Tua a good Hurts. title for it. Don't worry. Uh, we got we got a uh, – what's it called? I can't think of the word. Quick baby title. There we go. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. Uh, do you want me to end it or you want to end it? Go for it. Well, if you guys enjoyed this video, drop a like on this video. And subscribe to Chavenu. We would really appreciate it. And make sure you go follow our social medias. We have a link tree down in the description box below. We got Instagram. We got Twitter. We got TikTok. Every platform, we have it. Um, and eventually, we're going to be on Spotify and Apple Music. Or Apple Podcasts and Apple Music. Um, so be on the lookout for that. And we'll catch you guys later. Benchwire, out. <laughs>